Hi, welcome to my third screencast on Visual Learning Assistant. Today we're going to learn how to add a new file to SVN using Tortoise SVN and also we're going to learn how to create a patch allowing any users to contribute to the development of, a, of an open source application. This way, if a user that downloads your file discovers a bug they can create a patch for it and then send it to any developer on the team. So we get started. Here we have the trunk folder and the branch folder. The reason I have the branch folder here is to make all the changes in the branch folder and then use the trunk folder as a test. Right now there's a bug with the visual learning assistant. One of them is the node source code is missing and I'm gonna create a patch for that. Also, the VLA shortest path information is totally wrong and we're going to modify the code and put in put it in the same patch file which we're going to send to the developer. So we get started. We open the Visual Learning Assistant solution. So when Visual Learning Assistant solution loads up inside Visual Studios, the first thing we want to fix is the node code. We're going to VLA control library, that's where it's located. It's part of the VLA framework and we're going to add existing files, existing item. After adding the node source code, we're going to build the application, build the solution. and everything should be successful with zero failed or zero skipped. Now the next part is to modify the VLA shortest path information code. So we just go to the VLA shortest path information and we want to modify. At the moment, inside the VLA shortest path, we have information about linked list, which is totally wrong. So what we want to do is to fix this. Well, after fixing it, we get this. And the next step is to test the application, make sure everything is working and make sure everything is fixed. So we want to load in the shortest path illustration and we go to the about. And right here in the about, we have the right information regarding the shortest path problem. Now we close it down. Now, the next thing we do is to actually add the file, the node file to the SVN. So we're going to the control library, the same location. And as you can see right here, there is no green tick mark. So what we want to do is right click on the inside the folder. We go to Tortoise SVN and we navigate to add. Now we just want to uncheck, unselect everything. We have the two files, the node XAML and the node XAML.cs. And we check them and we select OK. Now they've actually been added. The next step is to create a patch. So we go to the top of the folder where we see the branch and the trunk. We right click on the branch folder, go to Tortoise SVN, we navigate to create a patch. And the patch has all the information of everything we've changed and we select OK. We browse for the patch location. Regarding the patch, we want to use this format. We want the issue ID, the summary, and the patch name. And what we want to call this file is, at the moment, there is no issue ID. So we're just going to call it issue ID 1. Sure. Issue ID one dot patch. When we click on save, test it, make sure everything works. We're going to apply the issue ID patch to trunk because trunk is the default source code we got from the SVN. So let's test this patch. So we go to Tortoise SVN, apply a patch. We navigate to the location.
issue ID one patch. We select OK, and we get this menu right here. So you can review the patch itself. So this is the original, and then after patch, you're going to have this. It's it's a good idea to review any patch you want to apply, just in case if there's any messless code in it. And then information, you can see everything that has changed. And when we're satisfied, we click, we select patch all items. And when that is done, we want to run this code just to see, just to make sure everything ro runs fine. So after loading the trunk, let's check if we have the node files. Here we are, we have the node files. We also need to check the shortest path information and we have the correct information. Now let's run the application for an extra check. Select shortest path, load, about, we have everything. Now the final step is to upload the patch to the developer. So first thing we do is we create a readme file, text document, readme. Inside the readme, we're going to write the issue ID, which is one, and the summary. and then we'll save it. We add both files into an archive and we name the archive issue id one dot zip. Select OK. So inside the issue id one zip we have the readme file and the patch file and we email this to any of the developers. Thanks for tuning in today. See you next time.